Hi, this is Simon Drew, and you're listening to the Walled Garden Podcast. This show belongs to the podcast network of the Walled Garden Philosophical Society, an international community of philosophers and seekers dedicated to the pursuit of truth, wisdom, virtue, and the divine, wherever they may be found. To find out more, go to thewalledgarden.com. But for now... Let's caretake the gardens of our minds, one meaningful conversation at a time. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Walled Garden Podcast. So today I wanted to share with you a recording of a recent meetup that we had in the Walled Garden Philosophical Society. It was hosted by Sharon LaBelle, who is, of course, the scholar of our little community. And Sharon talked about holiness. What is it? How do we recognize it? Uh, what are its qualities? Uh you know, and really just she she offered so many wonderful questions for us to think about. Sharon's excellent at that. She's she's so great at just getting your mind into that space where it can really question and sit with the questions, not to immediately seek an answer or immediately believe like we need to to know anything, but just to be able to sit with these questions and to ponder them. And so I'm going to let Sharon do just that. Uh, and before we dive in, I do just want to mention that this week we have two exciting events coming up in the Wall Garden Philosophical Society. Number one is we have this Friday at 10 a.m. PST, that's California time. We're going to be speaking with Professor William O. Stevens. If you've been in and around the uh, global Stoic community uh, over the past few years, you've probably heard from William O. Stevens. He's a, really a profound scholar, an incredible person, a man of high integrity, a man of high character. And uh, I've really come to enjoy uh, his presence over the past few years. You can go back and actually hear him on the World Garden podcast or probably back when it was the uh, the practical stoic. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Professor William O. Stevens, we're going to be discussing stoic cosmology and theology. So if that's something that sounds exciting to you, then we would love to have you in that conversation. We're going to be doing probably about an hour to an hour and a half interview, followed by a Q&A section uh, and, and discussion. Uh, so as I said, come along this Friday at 10 a.m. PST, California time. Uh, that's going to be on Stoic Cosmology and Theology. Now, the next meetup that we do have uh, is coming up the following day on Saturday at 5.30 PST. Uh, so that's going to be a soul-searching with Seneca meetup. We're going to be discussing Seneca's letter on values and this is such a beautiful letter. You can actually find uh, all of the text on the event page that we've set up on The Walled Garden. So all you have to do is go to thewalledgarden.com forward slash events, and you'll see the upcoming events that we have for the, uh, the weekly meetup or interviews like with 
uh, uh, Professor William O. Stevens, and you can also see the events for Soul Searching with Seneca there. And with all of that said, I want to uh, introduce Sharon LaBelle speaking on holiness. Let's talk about holiness. Holiness, what it is, why it might matter. I think it matters. Anyhow, so greetings, my philosophical friends, my fellow lovers of wisdom. A great day to you, great life, great moment, great opportunity, great you, great us, great togetherness. Let's begin our inquiry into holiness. Uh, how shall we do it? Oh, okay, here's how we'll do it. I'll speak for a few minutes, and then I want to open and widen our discussion. And the purpose of that will be to... to take a philosophical walk in the woods together. So uh, what might you need to put in your backpack for this shared walk? Not much. Um, because the main thing is we don't want to be weighted down by such leaden things as preconceived ideas. All you need to do, all you need to bring with you is a willingness to listen, to see, to imagine. Just simply bring, if you would, your intense curiosity and perhaps an openness to what philosopher Martin Buber described as a posture of I and thou. We're pretty accustomed to moving through life with the perspective of what Buber called I and it, I, it, which is a kind of utilitarian frame of mind, uh, focuses on expedience, uh, on the efficiency that propels us from here to there. It's oriented towards solving problems. But its shortcoming is that it views the world and other people merely as resources. Now, the I-thou stance, on the other hand, would have us, instead of using and manipulating and ever proceeding forward, it would instead, it would instead point us to reverence and to depth, to recognizing the eternal and the good in the other, in the other with whom we are in relationship. We are always in relationship. So just quickly, before we formally begin, I'm going to briefly introduce myself in case any of our listeners may not know me. I'm Sharon LaBelle. I've been writing and speaking about philosophical topics uh, for, for several decades now. And I'm probably best known for writing uh, the international bestseller, The Art of Living, the Classical Manual on Virtue, 
happiness and effectiveness, which is a modern interpretation of the philosophy of the great Stoic sage Epictetus. Now, I wrote that book with the idea that people who don't normally gravitate toward philosophy might partake of some of Stoic philosophy's riches. But most importantly, the book is meant to be an invitation to readers to go seek primary, primary philosophical texts, the origin texts. I've written a few other books too, one of which I'll mention later on. And I'm also a, a composer and performing musician on a one of a kind instrument I had made for me. It has 106 strings and it's a, it's a kind of supersized five octave fully chromatic hammered dulcimer. I was originally drawn to this instrument because the only way I know how to describe its sound is that it sounds holy. So to set us up and help us to fully focus on the subject at hand, I'm going to play a tune I started writing uh, about 10, 10 years ago, and it's unfinished. And I have a hunch, though I don't want to jinx it, that I may end up finishing it today. We'll see. It doesn't matter. A decade ago, when the tune first made its appearance to me, I immediately knew what its title would be, though I can't explain how this title, uh, it kind of insisted its way into my mind. What is the title? It's Kedoshim, Kedoshim, which happens to mean holy ones in Hebrew. The idea of Kedoshim also points to what is known as the holiness code in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament which sets forth the behaviors that make people holy. Things like, you know, not worshiping idols, not stealing, uh, the importance of paying workers a fair wage. Uh, and this conception of holiness is fascinating to me because, because of its legalistic spirit. And the idea that virtuous behavior is part and parcel of holiness. So I'm going to uh, play just the unfinished snippet of this tune that seeks its, con it, its uh, completion. Here we go. Let's see if we can. There we are. There it is.
okay. A little fragment. Um, I know uh, these little earbud things are not the ideal sound system, but um, there, there we have it. Uh, Kedoshim. <laughs> okay, so let's set two ground rules or guiding principles to establish the spirit of today's exploration. I want to invite each of us to, for the time that we're together here, to suspend any of our identifications with or allegiances to particular philosophical schools or other codified points of view. And also for the nonce, let's put aside um, our curated selves, our polished for public consumption, presentational selves. Because by doing this, I believe we will best allow ourselves to enter the current of shared philosophizing, of actively loving wisdom. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to put on the shelf. Uh, I'm, going to, I, I'm a mouthpiece for stoicism. Uh, I'm an observant Jew. I practice Buddhism. Um, I was married to a Jesuit, and then I got married to an a Irish Catholic. And, well, you could say, well, that just means you're from California. <laughs> but anyway, all to say that that's all going to be on the shelf for me. And I hope that you will put whatever your counterpart is to those kinds of affiliations. Because this time together is meant to be a heuristic venture. We are here, each of us, to with open minds and open hearts, be changed and to be enlarged for the better for having shared this time with one another. What we're here for is to suppose not to conclusively figure out, we're here to suppose as philosophical friends together. So let's take that philosophical walk together and hold this wiggly, multi-layered idea of holiness, a term, an expression that seldom arises within the nomenclature of academic philosophy, to be sure. And I think that's why I'm personally drawn to the idea, because it pushes at the edges of the philosophical enterprise. Holiness is usually found within the literature, the language, and experience of religion. Hmm. Why is that? Well, let's hold that question. This meetup is a bit of a self-indulgence for me. I need you. I need each of you to come on this journey of suppose with me. Because I have a thing about holiness. It's, a, it's an itch. It's a yearning uh, it comes from the idea of knowing that the extraordinary is always locked up inside the ordinary, but it can easily be liberated by a shift in seeing, by appreciation, by giving, by making, by trying, by caring, by full engagement. So here are some further ideas for you to hold but not necessarily for you to try to answer just yet. Let's live these questions together. What is the idea of the holy? What might holiness be for? 
Is it only the province of religion? Is it owned by those who believe in or relate to an idea of God only? Or can holiness be understood or experienced outside of religious observance or practice? Is holiness a transformation? Can holiness be encountered, let's say, through taking psychedelics? And if it were encountered thus, would this be legit holiness? Or would it be just a mirage, a kind of trick of the mind? Should we care about holiness? Does it matter? And if so, why and to whom? Why might we even need holiness? Why might we, why might we need it? Could holiness simply be the realization that what we think of as the ordinary is actually miraculous if we were to see it differently. Well, in anticipation of this meetup, I talked to a few of what you might call holiness experts. I talked to a priest, a Christian brother, a Buddhist, a Protestant minister, a rabbi, and some academics in the field of comparative religion. Well, every description or definition I heard about the idea of holiness seemed to fall into one of two categories, the objective and the subjective. What I'm calling the objective descriptions of holiness were those that regarded holiness as meaning exceptionally good, fulfilling all the virtues, as in a so-called holy person. This idea of the holy is one of moral perfection. I'm put in mind of the canonization of saints in the Catholic tradition, for example. The other way, the subjective way I heard holiness described was as a transcendent or mystical encounter with the divine. Something that happens within a person's emotional spaces, the mysterious tremendum, a kind of consuming awe that changes a person forever. Well, it's here that we have to pay homage to Rudolf Otto, the German philosopher and Lutheran theologian who wrote the seminal book, The Idea of the Holy, which was published in 1917. Otto was a zealous student of comparative religion. He believed that holiness did indeed embrace moral perfection. But perhaps even more importantly, he thought the defining element of the holy was what he called the numinous, the non-rational, non-sensory experience or feeling whose primary and immediate object is outside the self, outside the self. This mental state is the incomparable condition where the human being finds him or herself utterly what he called abashed, or we might say, completely transformed by awe. This term he coined, the numinous, 
which comes from the Latin numen. It means the power or presence or realization of a spiritual dimension of the presence or realization of divinity. Okay, a story. Many years ago, I lived for an extended time at a monastery run by Belgian uh, Cistercian nuns. And I went to stay there because I was working on uh, this book right here, The Music of Silence, with um, a Benedictine monk named Brother David Steindlerast. The book, The Music of Silence, highlights the elements of monasticism that can be fruitfully applied in the lives of regular, of, you know, of us worldly people. Anyhow, living at the monastery for me was an extraordinary experience. First of all, silence was observed at all times, except when it was absolutely necessary to speak. And this was meant, as you might guess, to facilitate contemplation as we did our jobs. And it was meant to deepen mindfulness, for example, as we ate our meals, went about our business throughout the day. Well, at this monastery, everything was simplicity itself. Uh, the room I stayed in had nothing but a bed, a, a desk, a light. It had a chair. That was it. And these beautiful nuns grew and harvested their own food. One of the things I remember the most was alongside the simplicity, there was also a great sense of order. Each day was divided into the eight canonical hours. There was vigils, the night watch, lauds, the coming of the light, prime, deliberate beginning, terse, blessing, sext, fervor and commitment, non, the shadows grow longer, vespers, lighting the lamps, compline, completing the circle, over and over again each day. At the start of each of these sacred hours, we would put down our work and silently go to the chapel to hear Gregorian chant. And the only way I could describe it is it was like a, I don't know, a kind of punctuation in time as we advanced through what you might call the seasons of the day. Now the light is this way, so it's time to do this. Now the light has turned that way. The shadows are long, so it's time to do that. And so we began each of the hours in this way. Just a brief coming together to hear or to chant this music, and then we would pivot back to our labors until it was time to once again stop and to listen and to heed the message of this moment. Every moment of the day was an opportunity to realize the blessing of aliveness. And this blessing of aliveness expressed itself in humble, very down to earth ways of service and mostly taking care of details 
a lot of details to pay attention to. Anyhow, the message of the daily rhythms of the monastery was to live responsibly, to live intentionally, to direct our lives from within, as opposed to being swept along by the demands of the clock, by external demands, by mere reactions to whatever happens. In that setting, life speaks, and we could hear it if we listened. Same as in our workaday lives, right? Well, I did not then, and I do not wish now uh, to live monastically. But what I can tell you, what I can tell you is I will never forget that formative time. This formative time, how do do I say it? It just kind of nonchalantly revealed the persistent, quiet ecstasy that underpins all of our lives, all of our moments. It's there. I saw it. I saw it. I felt it. I didn't have to believe in anything. I didn't have to worship anything. And I didn't have to change who I was. But I saw it. I felt it. And all I had to do was shut up and pay attention. I know that what I was experiencing there was holiness. I I don't know what else. I don't know what else to call it. And it forever left me awestruck at the very fact of existence and the blessing, again, for lack of a better word, that we have been assigned a seat in the theater of life and many roles on life's stages to experience the extraordinary ordinary. This I know, however ineffable, is not only good, but absolutely necessary for our understanding of ourselves as human beings encountering the unfathomable mystery of which we are a part. Some of you may not like the name, uh, or rather the word holiness. Maybe it conjures up... uh, you know, old organized religion wounds or something. But I don't have a better synonym. And all I know is that holiness, the the raw experience of it, the seeking of it, the practice of ritual to woo it, to draw it close, well, it's, it's perhaps the main thing that imparts dignity to the human spirit. And I think we tacitly understand this. Holiness or its possibility gives ennobling hope. It's a kind of promise that we're not just We're not just hapless bags of meat hurling through space, uh, reproducing, making a fuss over our apparent successes and failures, and then dying and eventually in the fullness of time being forgotten. Holiness says, keep looking. There is more than meets the eye. And I bet you it's good. 
Anyhow, I'm going to throw a few more bars of Kedoshim at you, and then we can open the discussion. Just a moment. What would I do with my sticks? Here they are. Well, now I turn to you. I'm interested to know, what do you think holiness is? Have you ever experienced it? What happened? Please tell us if you're comfortable doing so, because I think it would mean a lot. Right, so there you have it, Sharon LaBelle discussing holiness. And as you hear there at the end, she does pose the question to you. What is holiness to you? Have you experienced it? What was it like? And we would like to hear from you. You know, obviously we had a Q&A slash discussion uh, at the end of that meetup and you can get the full recording of, of all of that uh, if you join the Walled Garden Philosophical Society. Uh, but nonetheless, we still want to hear from you. So if you do have any thoughts on holiness or experiences that you've had, we would love to hear from you. Send us an email. Uh, just go to thewalledgarden.com forward slash contact and you can fill out the form there. Uh, we would love to hear about your experiences and perhaps uh, uh, we could share that on a, a future episode as well. But nonetheless, I just wanted to uh, round off this episode by again inviting you to attend uh, the Walled Garden Philosophical Society meetups that we've got coming up, uh, including this Friday with William O. Stevens, Professor William O. Stevens, uh, discussing Stoic theology and cosmology, uh, which is extremely fascinating when you get into the weeds with that sort of stuff. It's, uh, it's quite profound. And again, uh, this Saturday at 5.30 p.m., uh, PST, California time, we've got our next Soul Searching with Seneca meetup uh, with Judith Stove alongside me and other uh, members and listeners of the Walled Garden podcast. Uh, so that's going to be focusing on Seneca's letter on values, and you can get the entire text to read it before the meetup uh, on the event page. So again, go to thewalledgarden.com forward slash events. You can register there, and we would love to see you. All right, enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Walled Garden Podcast. Remember that this show is a part of the podcast network of the Walled Garden Philosophical Society. If you consider yourself to be a seeker of understanding, of wisdom, a cultivator of virtue, then we want to learn and grow with you. Just head over to thewalledgarden.com to find out more. We'll see you there, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.